In today's video, I want to walk you through Elicit, which is a AI research assistant, but it's kind of a combination of like a summarization tool like TLDR and something like Lateral. And I think it's really, really cool. And I want to show it to you guys today. So this is the homepage of Elicit. You do have to make an account initially whenever you want to get started. It is completely free though. I, right now I don't even see paid services that they have, which is so unique compared to a lot of the other tools like this. So basically the main task that it has is this kind of literature review, ask a research question. So one of the recent searches that I did is how does eye mobility spectrometry separate steroid isomers? This is a question that I worked on in my graduate school. So we're going to ask that question first. And you can ask any types of questions. And it does say it's a little bit more geared towards biomedical and things like that or asking what are the effects of X on Y. But after working through it and, and using it some, I think it's a lot more robust than they're talking about. Whenever I search this, it's giving me back some, and it usually gives you about like back seven articles initially. So it's kind of like a Google Scholar. And so what it's doing is it's giving you the paper title that is relevant or answering your research questions. If while you are looking at these papers, you also want to be able to develop your own ideas for your own research projects, download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. The link will be in the description below. So mine was how does eye mobility spectrometry separate steroid isomers? And so what we see is this first one is talking about eye mobility for the separation of isomers. And then this one is also talking about that, but then we get some that are talking about just eye mobility, using it for polymeric isomers, different types of isomers, peptides, glycans. And so this is the one thing that I really like about this is whenever I use search engines like this, I usually get things like this happening where I get a wide range of things happening. But if I, I can actually come up here and click filter, and I'm going to do keywords and I'm going to force it to have the keyword steroid in it. And so it's going to make sure that the abstracts actually contain the keyword steroid. Under my filters, I can also control the publication date. So if you only want things from the last five years, you can control that within the published after as well. And so now when I look through this, all of these are directly related to ion mobility separation of steroids. And it's giving me the abstract summary here. So I can really quickly kind of look through and see what's going on here. And to give you an example of how well it does this, this is my first published paper. It says, eye mobility can successfully sterate stereo isomers using diameric addicts of group one metals. That is accurate. Like that, that's what the, this paper talked about. This one is also my paper. That's accurate, but this was the important thing here was specifically looking at mixtures rather than just looking at individual solutions of steroids. So this is giving you a good idea of different papers to include. So this would be really good if you're learning your field or if you're starting a literature review and you're trying to see what is the relevant literature that you want to cover in your literature review. You can also do show, show more to get more papers related to that as well. So you can also sort by on this. So you can sort by the title, abstract summary, PDF, year, and citations here. If you want to get like those with the most citations first, you can do that. But this is steroids, but it's doing it through GCMS. It's not even including the it wasn't even including eye mobility in it. So the, you are going to lose relevance when you try and sort by those other things. I wanna show you how this is cool and related to like lateral. So basically right here, you just have your paper, your paper title and your abstract summary, but you can actually add in different information for this paper. So you can add in the journal in here, you can add in different metadata in here. And then you can actually look at the different information from the study itself. So this is population studied. This would be really good for like, you know, biomedical studies or psycho psychological studies where you have populations. I'm talking about steroids and chemistry. It doesn't work as well for that. Organism studied would be really helpful. I might do one later to see how that works. But you can also look at intervention studied. So I'm curious what this pulls up in something like this. 
So yeah, it's pulling up basically the type of IM mobility, which is actually really cool. Sometimes it's really hard to find that. You can also look at the results. And this is what I think is super cool. So you can get a detailed abstract summary added in, and it's kind of bolding the important words for you here. And then you can also get the main findings included. So it kind of gives you bullet points as to what the different findings were. And then you can actually get a question relevant summary. So it's gonna take my question above and it's actually gonna answer that for every paper. So you can see it says the mechanism by which IM mobility separates steroid isomers is, and then it answers that for all the different ones. So this is for saying CCSs, this is saying derivatizing them, which is accurate, using group one metal adduction, which is also accurate, metal adduction and multimerization, that's correct. So you can kind of see that you can quickly get an answer to the specific question you're asking without having to just understand what the paper is talking about in general. And then you can also get a limitations. And I think when I did this before, it wasn't actually able to pull out those limitations. Yeah, it's kind of struggling to pull out those limitations for these types of papers, which is already said it's not really meant for the type of question that I'm asking here. So you can get a lot of different types of data from this, and then you can actually export it. So if you want to upload it in to something like Notion or just Excel or anything else that you want to upload it in, you can actually export it as a CSV file. So here you can see the CSV file. It has the title, abstract, authors. It basically has everything you just asked it to provide, and then it has, you know, all of this information in here as well. The limitations is blank, as we saw earlier, but it has the main findings already in there and everything like that. So you can always take this and upload it to a Notion or something like that. You can see it also in here has the PDF. So this one's blank, but if there is actual a PDF link that it can find, it will actually populate that. So you can easily get the PDF and the DOI is also in here as well. So this is a really cool way to be able to take this out of Elicit and put it into something else to organize your literature review or to make more notes on it. Or even if you wanna take this and combine it with Zotero as well, different ways to be able to organize this knowledge. So I'm gonna restart this just to ask a slightly different question. And I'm gonna say, how does maternal obesity affect health search. So this is what they more try and say to use this for is basically how one thing affects another thing. And so what I'm going to do is I want to look for specific information and I want to look for organism and I want to see how it shows up here. So you can see this is in humans, humans, sows, which are, yeah, porcine. So you can actually quickly be able to see what the different sums that are there for them. Mice is here. So yeah, you can see that these are in very different things. So if you're quickly trying to find specific things, being able to know the organism that that paper was done on really quickly is really cool. And I also wanna use number of participants on this and see, yeah, so some of these are really large studies. Some of these are really small studies. So I think being able to quickly get this, I don't know the full accuracy of these numbers. I would have to check on this, but like being able to quickly get this information where you don't have to go and read every single paper to figure out does it fit with what you're trying to do is super, super cool. The last thing that I do want to show you is that Elicit actually, this is not the only function it can do. So if you go to tasks up here, there is actually a wide range of public tasks that it's actually able to complete. And so people are building out these different tasks. You can brainstorm things. You can reframe a critical statement more positively. So if you're trying to review something and you're trying to say it better, or I think there's one that will actually take a critical statement and reframe it into a question as well. There's just a lot of different things that it is able to do. So one of these here, if you're having trouble identifying variables, it will actually, if you give it a hypothesis, it will tell you what is the dependent and independent variable there and even suggest search terms and other things. And I play around with these a little bit and I might do future videos on them. 
But overall, the main one that it is doing is this lit review. And that's the one that I actually think is super cool and being able to kind of go a step beyond what Google Scholar does. And it's kind of an in-between of like almost a research rabbit and a lateral coming together with like AI and Scholar C kind of built into it. So I think this is super cool. If you have never tried it, I will leave a link in the description below. Go try it out and let me know what you think about it in a comment in the description below. If you want to check out Research Rabbit, which allows you to find connections between a lot of different papers, I will leave a link to a tutorial to that up here. This video here will show you the 10 best softwares that you should be using as a graduate student or a researcher this year. If this video is helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more ways to become more efficient in your research, and I hope to see you in the next video.